Hey, Jace, we made sure that back door is staying open. In the programs? Bitch of a warden is forcing them to work. Most of them got away. Most? And the others? God. You don't imagine it. You know the risks, the lives. But you can't believe you're really gonna lose anyone. We do what we can, Jace. We lost some people out there today. But there are hundreds more depending on us. Yeah. Of course. Thank you for what you're doing out there. For all those people. And for me. Sure. I'm gonna get back to it now. Let me know if you make any more progress. This guy, Trey Stone, doesn't make things easy. He always seemed kind of ambitious. He and Walker always had some friction. Walker mentioned Stone before, but never in a friendly way. I take it he isn't very likable? He's a creep. But I've had to work with all kinds of people before. Sometimes you tolerate jerks just because they get the job done. Did he get the job done? I don't actually know. He kind of insulated himself. As a subcontractor, I couldn't supervise him the way I did other people. I had to trust Walker when he said things were going well. Walker's dead. You? Yeah. If Walker's dead, why are we still hiding in a cave? He was middle management. Stone's still out there working with Miles and who knows who else. Citadel's still operational. This is far from over. I'm... Uh... You were friends, right? I'm... I don't know what to say. He, he wasn't really... I know what you mean. We could spend all day listing his sins, and we'd still have plenty more to check off tomorrow. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. You know that one from memory? You don't get rich trying to be right all the time. I've had to forgive a lot of people, and I've... Had to ask for forgiveness, too. Hey, did Fox tell you who his inside source might be? I don't want to press him. I'm not even 100% sure that he has one, but... If that source gets into trouble, he could need someone to help out. He hasn't told me. And I doubt he would respond well to a man with a gun asking him the question. Hey, you don't have to tell me. Just as long as you know. I don't know. And it's not like him to be quiet about anything. I mean, the things that guy told me about his ex-wife? It was like listening to a guy describe a squid eating a chocolate birthday cake. Nobody needs to hear that. So, if he is keeping this secret, it must be pretty big. Must be. Hey, I've been hearing about that World 2.0 stuff, and... Maybe the world needs a software patch, but a utopia? Really? People out there and the rest of the world... They think the Earth's dying. They have this belief in scarcity. They think that we'll run out of energy, out of space, or out of water, or anything. And that makes every day a crisis. And World 2.0 would fix that crisis? It was more about fixing that mentality. I wanted to show the rest of the world that with innovation, with creativity, and with a little courage, it's easy to see the universe is abundant. And how about now? It's still an abundant universe. That hasn't changed. Just, I thought I could keep out jealous people. And the cowards. No getting away from them. No. I'm probably not as brave as I want to be either. How did you buy Aroa in the first place? I didn't buy it. I leased it. Aroa's technically part of New Zealand, but the U.S. had leased it for years. Yeah. That's why there's the old naval station. But wouldn't it have been easier to rent a chunk of California or something? I'm sure there's a big stretch of the Mojave that nobody wants. Yeah. 
The abandoned naval station here piqued our interest initially, hoping we could piggyback on the Cold War infrastructure. That was a wash. But once we had visited Aurora, its biodiversity won us over. Good Hope Mountain has ice, Infinity is surrounded by fields, and the swamps of Finn Bog sport as harsh a conditions as any good drone tester could wish for. We fell in love with the place. I bought the lease from the U.S. government. And now these are your islands. No government but Skeltech. Well, avoiding government regulation was a factor. I'll bet it was. When did you get away from using dollars? You like the screds? I don't understand them. They're a cryptocurrency. As much as we could, we wanted to get away from the control of international banking. But it's a made-up money. All money is made up. It only has value because we all agree on it as a medium of exchange. Everyone in Aurora agrees to use screds. And Skeltech makes sure to create a limited supply. So if we all agree to use your play money instead of dollars, the economy still works the same way? Money's only worth what you think it's worth. My mind? Blown. I get that Maddox ain't exactly warm and friendly, but why do people hate her? They don't hate her as much as they fear humanity's evolutionary destiny. Whoa. That sounds a little intense, even for you. Grace Maddox is in charge of Skeltech's transhumanist research, Project Deus. Yeah, on a personal level, she's not, you know, fun. She's also really into herself. Sure. She's really effective. I gave her a huge budget. She wants more. You give it to her? Ayana Puri, my CFO, wouldn't let me. So Maddox cut costs. Instead of spending the time to perfect a true quantum computer, she developed a DNA-based computer that behaves like a quantum computer. And you know what she's doing with that? She plans to download her mind onto that computer. I know it sounds a little crazy and unbelievable, but someone will do it. And she should be first. Sometimes it seems like Harmony is the only Skeltech kid in Aroa. I don't know. We invited more people to Aroa who had children, but most of them turned us down. It was kind of great having Harmony around. Kind of worked out, though. There ain't so many kids in Aroa for me to worry about. Believe me, worrying about Harmony is enough. You two seem to get along. Yeah. She treats me like another kid. She's smart, but having her around helps me see things with new eyes. But aside from her dad, she has no one else here? No, just me. So what does a billionaire arms dealer do when he's not manufacturing killing machines? Skeltech is responsible for an extensive catalog of inventions over the past decades. I'm listening. Our first economically viable autonomous machine was the Skel Farmer, a harvester capable of recognizing the range and ripeness of crops. Since then, it's found unintended utility in mining and forestry. So explain to me how you got from farming drones to war machines. Our next invention, the Skel Transporter, was the first affordable smart delivery device, a new standard in the industry. The Skel Doctor may interest you, an advanced cousin specialized to carry sensitive medical supplies. You could easily shoot one out of the sky to steal its payload. Could be useful. Our Cherubim City and Sky models behave like mobile CCTVs capable of facial and behavioral identification and alert authorities in real time. I suggest you steer clear of them if you want to move undetected. I'll keep that in mind. My point is that I have dedicated my life to improving the human condition and relieving the population from the crushing weight of repetitive work. Well, let's see if we can make sure your legacy is intact at the end of this. Explain something to me. This Titan program. Why in the hell would you think it was a good idea to build giant killing machines? Aren't lethal drones enough? I recognize that smaller drones are already deadly and far more cost efficient, but I was... influenced. Walker? He was always complaining that the existing drones didn't have enough media presence. These days, wars are fought on television screens. He wanted titans that could exude charisma and raise hope and simultaneously suffocate the spirit of a nation. Sounds charming. I find that once I'm given a task, my inspiration is fueled by the vacuum. I knew that what Walker wanted was entirely unnecessary for counterterrorism, but I got carried away. Now I shudder to imagine what he intended the whole time. 
You're not the only one. Stay out of trouble. Focus is my forte. 